Hey folks, welcome back. So we have covered a lot of basics so far and um, built a good foundation. <clears throat> so let's uh, go ahead and look at some visualization concepts. So let me show you a few ways to create some advanced visualization. So the goal of this lecture is to kind of give you a walkthrough of some advanced visualization techniques, some ways to sort data, some ways to group data, and what are the other features available. <clears throat> All right, so let me open up Tableau and this is the same workbook that we have been working with in the last few lectures. And what I'm going to do is, uh, let's start something from scratch, right? Let me add a new data source and then I'll say, I'll connect it to my SQL server. All right, so I'll go ahead and connect to my AdventureWorks database now. Um, again, just a quick rewind. This is a database that, um, you know, ships along with SQL Server. This is like a sample database that Microsoft provides. Um, I have actually given some links in case you are interested in, in kind of installing that, but you know, this is not an absolute necessity for this course or anything. All right, so let me actually drag and drop a few tables. So let's say, <clears throat> all right, let's say the purchase order detail. Okay, and it, it shows a couple of rows and a couple of columns. Uh, looks like everything is would be measures. So we'll need something to, um, you know, have some dimensions as well. So let's see if there is some other table. All right, so let's use product and see what it gives us. Did an inner join, let's update it. All right, so we have some data to play with. And let's also take the, um, purchase order detail, right? So three things that we have joined and now we have some data to work with. Actually, let me do it this way. Purchase order header maybe, and then product. Maybe if I join it the other way, I'll get some data. Okay, so I have some data to play with now, right? So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a worksheet <clears throat> and it has automatically classified as dimensions and measures. Now, what we are going to be looking at is this particular tab, show me, right? It has a number of graphs and you see that it, it, everything is disabled here, but when you hover on it, it kind of shows you like what, what is required to enable it. Like in this case, it's one or more dimensions and zero or two measures, right? So let's go ahead and select one, um, measure and one dimension and see what happens, right? So let's, let's take say name and um let's take um order quantity so i've just selected using the control so i have pressed the control button and i have clicked on one dimension and one measure and you see that some of the things get um enabled over here right so let's say that i'm clicking on the horizontal chart and it kind of gives me this horizontal chart based on the two things that we selected right, the name and the order quantity. Cool. Um, yeah, one, one cool thing is if you, if you hover on this particular column, you see this small icon and if you click on that, that'll actually sort this. And if you click it again, it'll sort it in ascending and so on and so forth. So you can kind of cycle that. The other way is definitely you can go to the particular uh, attribute and then say sort, and then it'll give you a couple of options as to how to sort it. <clears throat> You can sort it ascending, descending by alphabetically, or you can sort it based on a particular field as well. So some options out there that you can kind of, um, you know, look at. Um, and then again, if you want to kind of clear off this whole uh, chart, there is a easy way to do that. And that is a ready-made icon called clear sheet. And then it just clears the whole sheet, right? So let's try some other graph. Let's try, um, say product line and, uh, what else? 
let's do list price so again i'm selecting two and let's say i select on pie chart and it creates a pie chart for me right so it's kind of very simple but this this pie chart is a little bit um you know it's it's difficult to read so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to kind of display the numbers so drag and drop list price to label and it will actually show you the numbers and again you can if you want just a percentages you can just right click this is something we covered in the previous lecture say quick calculation and say percent of total and then it kind of gives you this percent of total again you can click on this and say format and then say i just want um you know one decimal point and it'll show you one decimal point so plenty of stuff you can do with this um you know with formatting and stuff like that right uh let's look at one more one more example but but you get the overall picture right it's it's basically just um you know choosing a couple of dimensions and measures and and seeing which graph fits in best into that criteria so let's do something else let's let's take the product line and then let's say um line total and order quantity right and if you do this it kind of um you know gives you a couple of options which absolutely requires two measures right so if i click on this scatter plot you'll find this getting plotted right this is the line total this is the order and their intersection is kind of what is marked over here so some cool stuff and, and then you can visualize the data as a tabular format as well so this is the product line this is the line total and i've just converted that into a scatter plot right so it's it's pretty cool to kind of look at these different things that is provided by tableau now um yeah so one more thing i wanted to kind of um show you is um let's actually do something let's actually clear the sheet and then let's use name and say order quantity right and i'm going to plot this and sort this out right there are a couple of things available over here let me just close this uh, one is if you kind of right click uh, it kind of selects one of them and you can actually select um, everything and say right click and say mark label and always show so it will kind of show you those labels as well right uh, similarly there are a couple of things you can do like if you want to kind of uh, maybe just concentrate on the top 10 you can kind of select the top 10 right and then hover on it and say keep only and it's going to filter it out right so we'll we'll talk more about filters but <clears throat> you see that the attribute has appeared in filters but we'll talk more about that um yeah by the way if you actually click on this left side arrow it'll undo and it has like a lot of undo steps like you can keep undoing it like 100 times or more so if you make a mistake just keep clicking on that right um the next cool thing i wanted to kind of show you is suppose um you know you are looking at this chart and you want to kind of group the top performing into one set you can actually highlight on that hover on that um and then actually create a separate set out of it um let me go ahead and create this and then i'll call this as group one or something like this right and now um if you actually search for group there is a set called group one so i'll just go ahead and clear this oops I'll clear this and say group one and it'll tell you inside and outside of that group and i can actually start playing around with some parameters right so list price of all the things that was inside that group that we selected versus outside so it kind of gives you an inside cluster outside cluster analysis you can also deep dive and say give me the names of or the product lines inside it um you know and then the product lines outside it so plenty of stuff you can do with it right so a lot of stuff in that um of course you can actually this is one way of grouping it uh but you can actually have another um you know custom calculations as well we covered calculations a little bit so let me show you this so say for instance you have style and then you have a list price right so let's say i want to create two groups anything that's less than uh, maybe thousand as group one and anything that's greater than thousand as group two and there's an easy way of doing it right so um you can just right click and say create a calculated field and i will just call this as groupings and i'll say that if my um 
sum of list price is um, say less than thousand then I'm calling it as group A else I will call that as group B simple stuff right and then end the calculation contains errors let's see what the error is ah I forgot to close this now it should be fine so once we drag and drop groupings this is one way to kind of add some groups so it has group a group b according to our calculation right um all right so one of the things i wanted to also show you is concept of parameters right so i will go ahead and create a new parameter i will call this as my custom threshold and let's see custom threshold and i'm going to expose this parameter and then you know uh, use this for something so what should we use it for let's say for example we just created these groupings and i don't want to hard code this thousand rather i want the user to send the threshold so i'm going to say that take this from my custom threshold and then accordingly classify it right so it is all group b now let's say if i put thousand you see it changing right so this parameter is actually driving that filter and that particular grouping right so plenty of stuff you can see i just wanted to show you how you can connect these different things and then you know create this uh, highly flexible um, reports um yeah so uh, again I'll, I'll provide some reading materials as well um hope hopefully this will give you this lecture should have given you a brief introduction on how to create charts and reports and how to group stuff how to use some calculations and how to use parameters more effectively to have more dynamic interaction with the users and then they can interact with the report more effectively right so yeah hope to see you in the next lesson um so have a great day